IV graphs can be kind of tricky, and you need to be able to recognize the IV graphs for these three components and explain why they look like they do. So, first of all, a resistor, the shape for this is a straight line. For a bulb, we've got this sort of weird kind of S-shaped curve. And then for a diode, uh, we have a uh, a rather unusual looking graph as in it's not symmetrical uh, on any, any axis like the other ones and you need to be able to explain exactly why these graphs look like they do so first of all the iv graph for a resistor uh, so we've got on the y-axis current and on the x-axis potential difference or voltage uh, for a resistor this is a directly proportional relationship which is very common in the sciences especially physics uh, it's directly proportional because it is a straight line that goes through the origin, whether it's positive or negative, uh, it will be a straight line. So this is uh, in relation to Ohm's law. So uh, the equation is V equals IR, but in this case, uh, let's try and make it look like the linear equation Y equals MX plus C. The equation of a straight line but obviously there's no intercept so there's no c uh, on the y-axis we actually have current now if we rearrange ohm's law up here to make i the subject uh, we have uh, v over r uh, so here if this is uh, uh, y is the current the y-axis is current the x-axis is voltage, therefore the only thing left for the gradient is 1 over r. So the gradient of this line would be 1 over the resistance. Okay. Now this means it is an ohmic conductor. I can just see that through there in the... Let's try and rubble this out a bit. Uh, we have uh, an ohmic conductor uh, follows Ohm's law, so which is exactly what this does. It's a resistor, follows Ohm's law, it's a straight line through the origin. Uh, next up, we have the IV graph for a diode. Uh, a diode, which looks like this, has a very high resistance in one direction, so the current can only flow in this way, left to right. So it looks like a play symbol here in one direction, and it looks like a wall of resistance in the other direction. So uh, that means we get a current, uh, a current voltage graph that looks like this. Uh, it usually goes flat for a little while until you reach what's called the breakdown voltage. Okay. Now this is just enough energy so that the diode conducts electricity. And then afterwards, it will conduct electricity very, very well. Uh, so the current gets higher and higher for just adding that a little bit more electrical energy. Uh, it is a non-ohmic conductor. How do we know this? It is not a straight line. So an ohmic conductor follows Ohm's law. So whether you draw IV or whether you draw a VI graph, uh, it will follow Ohm's law. It's an ohmic conductor. So the gradient here equals 1 over R, the gradient here equals R. And this is a very tricky one, and I think if you can understand this graph, you can pretty much under say you understand the electricity very, very well uh, in terms of the basics of resistance, voltage, and current. So we have the IV graph for a bulb here. Now, it helps to have a good conceptual model in your head of what electricity looks like uh, as it flows through. So in my head, what I see is a wire that's got loads of um, ions, protons inside it. And what's happening is an electron is trying to move its way down here. And this electron has a lot of energy. Okay. So the models that I've used before, you can talk about um, the year seven making his way down the corridor and he's going to bump into uh, the six formers, okay? And he's carrying a 12, slice, 12 slices of pizza or you can do lunch money or whatever. And every time the electron collides with the ions here, um, he's going to transfer a little bit of energy. So if you were to measure the amount of energy, electrical energy, before and after, 
you would measure the change in voltage or the um, the lunch money or whatever the pizza here we've got one electron bumping into three six formers so if there's a 12 slice pizza there's going to be four slices of pizza for every six former because we've got a series circuit here so going back to electrical terms the electron bumps into here into the ions uh, more frequently as we increase the current and energy is transferred so where does that energy go it's got to go somewhere because we can't destroy the energy uh, the energy is transferred to the ions and causes their kinetic energy to increase. So uh, this is essentially what temperature is. Uh, these ions were already moving because atoms in a solid vibrate from side to side around a fixed point. But when the electron transfers energy to them, these atoms move even more. Um, the temperature of the wire increases because this is essentially what temperature is it's average kinetic energy of a substance this is going to mean an increase in resistance so picture this electron leaving energy as it bumbles down this wire the next electron to come through is going to have to face these electrons which are now let's face these ions which are now moving even more there's a hotter wire there's more kinetic energy of the ions so the next electron is going to find it harder and harder to get down through this wire so as we keep adding energy eventually we'll reach a maximum current which is allowed in the bulb uh, after this point you're no longer getting light you're just adding heat it's not going to help the current any at all the resistance is too high and ultimately the uh, bulb will blow